It's uh, great to be here with you guys this morning. Excited to share a word that God has put on my heart. And if you were here last Sunday, you would have heard Pastor Paul's keynote message talking about Joshua to be strong and courageous. And it was a, a great word that is set up this year. And I, I want to continue on with that theme and I want to continue on with Joshua. So if you have your Bibles, can you turn to Joshua chapter 6? Joshua chapter 6. I'll be reading from verses 1 to 5. Joshua chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. If you don't have your Bibles, don't worry. It is on the screen behind me. And it says, Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because the people of Israel. No one went out and no one came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with his king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all the men of war, going around the city once. Thus you shall do for six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. On the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. And when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, everyone straight before him. This morning, I want to speak on the title, A Tense expectation a tense expectation I'm sure at some point in your life you would have felt tension the word tense comes from the Latin word to stretch and so I'm sure we've all felt stretched maybe stretched financially stretched emotionally maybe even stretched spiritually now tension can feel like stretching and that can cause stress And if we're being honest, we would like to avoid tension because tension can create stress and stress can make us anxious. And I'm sure we've all been in in that time where it's been a, a tense conversation or a tense moment and we're not really sure how to react. We're not really sure what to do. If you know me, you'll know that I'm very competitive. I love to win at every game I play. And the problem is, so is my sister. And so we can sometimes have tense competitions, tense board games. I'm sure my friends could attest to that, that sometimes they've been caught up in the middle of a tense game, of a tense conversation. And tension can sometimes be awkward. Tension can sometimes be stressful. Tension can even be painful. And so if we're honest, we would like to avoid tension. But what I found is that God has a purpose for our lives, and so he will allow us to go through a tense challenge so that he can stretch us, so we have to learn to rely on him. This year, I want to let you know God has a purpose for you, but along with that purpose, there is a challenge that will demand you to trust in him. And this is what we see in Joshua chapter 6. Joshua is walking into the promises and the purpose that God has for him. What is that purpose? Well, God had called Joshua to conquer the cities and take the promised land for him. God had commanded Joshua to be strong and courageous because there was a promise and a purpose that God wanted Joshua to walk into. Now, Joshua knew that, and so for that reason, he was marching towards his purpose. And I want to start off by letting you know that you have a purpose. A purpose that is beyond what you could imagine or think of. A purpose that will give you focus and clarity to see what you are moving towards. Now some of you, when you hear the word purpose, you get excited. But maybe for others, when you hear the word purpose, you think, well, what purpose do I have? Maybe you've not been moving towards your purpose because you are confused. You've tried and you look for your purpose, but you haven't found it, so now you're thinking, I have no purpose. Or maybe you feel like you're not good enough, you're not special enough to have a purpose. Or maybe even there's been so much stuff that has happened in your past, and you're thinking, how could I have a purpose? And the problem with this thinking, the problem with not knowing your purpose, is that without focus, we can wander around aimlessly. 
2018 has come and gone, and now in 2019, we can be walking around the same walls doing the same things because we don't know what God is bringing us into. Without clarity, instead of living on purpose, we're just existing. Instead of moving forward, we're walking around in circles. Without purpose, we can feel lost. But I want to let you know God has a unique purpose for you. This purpose is not just relegated to the pastors, but it is for everyone. Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Here's what God's saying. He's saying that you are not an accident, that he has set you apart for a reason, for a purpose. And you may think you're not special, but I want to let you know that you are special. That you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a masterpiece by design, and God has a purpose for you. Every year at the beginning of the year, me and my family set time aside to, to pray and, and seek God. And we evaluate the goals we made last year. And then we take time to make some new goals for this year. And I look forward to this because it's a time to thank God for everything that he's done. But it's a time to say, God, what would you like to do this year? It's a time to thank him for his faithfulness, but say, God, what are the purposes that you want me to walk into? And this gives me a focus and a clarity to see what God is bringing me into. I want to encourage you this year, why don't you be intentional and say, God, I'm going to determine to walk into everything that you have for me this year. Here's a good word. Why don't you say, God, I'm going to position my life according to the purposes and the plans that you have for me. Joshua positioned his life towards the promised land, towards the purpose that God had for him. And now we see Joshua on the edge of that promised land. The Israelites have just crossed over from the Jordan, and now they're facing Jericho. There is a promise, there is a land, but what is in front of them is a challenge. And I want to let you know that this year you are going to face a challenge. But your challenge is the first step into experiencing the fulfillment of your purpose. Your challenge is the first step into experiencing the fulfillment of your purpose. You may not know your purpose, but your challenge reveals your purpose. Your challenge is a signpost to your purpose. You see, you've been thinking your, your marriage was a challenge, but behind that challenge, God had a purpose in your marriage. You've been thinking that your work situation was a challenge, but behind that work situation, God had a purpose for you in your work. Your challenge reveals your purpose. And could it be that you're facing a big challenge because there's a big purpose behind that challenge? Could it be that God has something so exceedingly abundantly more than you could imagine or think of? And Jericho was the first step, the first challenge in the way of Joshua entering into the promised land. And this just wasn't any challenge. This was a big challenge. The walls of Jericho were huge. In fact, the walls of Jericho were made up of two walls. The first wall was on ground level and it was about 15 feet high. Then on top of that, there was a mud embankment that would slope up, and another wall was on top of that that was about 26 feet high. So you got to imagine there's one wall. Then on top of that wall, there would be a slope, and on top of that slope, there was another wall. Altogether, these walls could have made up of somewhere between 46 feet high. And on top of that, the city of Jericho had plenty of resources, and there was a spring located in it. Meaning this city was impenetrable. Joshua was facing a near impossible task. And now on the edge of his promise, just as he is stepping into his purposes, Joshua is faced with a task, with a challenge that seems impossible. Joshua, how can, how can he walk into the promises when there's a challenge in front of him? And I wonder if Joshua and the Israelites were a little bit frustrated. You see, they had just crossed over from the Jordan. They had just crossed over from one challenge, and now on the edge of their promise is another challenge. And doesn't life sometimes feel like that? Almost as if there's challenge after challenge. 
Like we've entered into 2019 and we're just at the beginning, just on the edge of a new year. And before we've even been able to settle in, there's a challenge in front of you. And it's like, God, I've already crossed over so many challenges in 2018. I've already faced so many obstacles and now there's a challenge. And it can be hard because we can shout from the front of the stage that 2019 is going to be your year. The best is yet to come. But you can already feel drained, tired, and discouraged. And maybe you're here and you know God has a purpose for you, but you're facing a near impossible challenge. The walls of Jericho were impossible to defeat. I wonder, what is your wall in front of you this morning? Maybe for some, it was your marriage. In 2018, your marriage was on the rocks. It, it just about survived. And now, in 2019, it feels like it's already destined to fail. Maybe that wall for some of you looks like financial struggles. Debt is already creeping on you, and financial freedom seems so far away. Or maybe for some, it's a mindset. It's an addiction that has been eating away at you, and you don't know how you're going to overcome I want to ask you, what is the wall that is standing in front of you? What challenge is stopping you from entering into the purposes that God has for you? And you have to understand that there will be a challenge in front of the promise. That's why God spoke to Joshua and he said, be strong and courageous because he knew there was going to be a challenge that seemed impossible. He knew there was going to be an obstacle in their way. And maybe you're here this morning and there's an obstacle in your way and you're saying, God, how do I move forward? Isn't that a good question to ask? Like, God, what do I do in the midst of my challenge? And I want you to see what God says to Joshua in the midst of his challenge. We read that Jericho is tightly shut up. No one is coming in and no one is going out. And God says to Joshua, see, I've given Jericho into your hands. See, I've given Jericho into your hands. Now let's take a moment to think about this. Because the walls of Jericho, remember, they're about 46 feet high. They're impenetrable. They're, they're like undefeatable. And remember, Jericho is tightly shut up. No one is coming in and no one is going out. Yet God says to Joshua, see, I've given Jericho into your hands. God, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be looking at. Is anyone else confused when you read this passage? Like, God, are, are you seeing what I'm seeing? You said to Jericho, Joshua, you're going to give him Jericho, yet the walls seem stronger than ever. And I don't know about you, but sometimes it feels like God, what he says to me is ironic. Almost like it's the complete opposite to what I'm experiencing. Has anyone else felt that? It's like God says, I've called you to be more than a conqueror, but right now I feel defeated in my weaknesses and my struggles. God, you said you'd give me favor, but everyone else is being promoted in their job but me. God, you said you would never leave me or forsake me, that your hand would uphold me, but now I feel so lonely, now I feel so weak. God, you've said one thing, but at the moment it's the complete opposite. What am I supposed to be looking at? And it's almost like there's this tension between what God says to Joshua and what Joshua is actually experiencing. Have you ever felt that tension? The tension between what, what God says to you and what you're actually experiencing? The tension of, of a promise, of an expectation, but not yet living in it? If you've been in the church for the past couple months, you'll, you know that recently I, I went away on a trip and I came back and I felt really a, a heavy call from God to reach out to the students in Manchester. And this year especially, we've decided to reach out to the students in Salford University. Now, Salford University has one of the highest rates of depression and anxiety in the UK. In fact, besides London, Manchester has the highest percentage of students struggling with mental health. It is so bad that the government is, the Manchester government is going to be shipping in millions of pounds to respond to this problem. 
And so I feel like God was saying, if this is the government's response, what is the church's response? And so we felt commissioned by God to reach out to these students who are broken, who are lost, who are hurting, to show them God's love and to say, there is hope with Christ. And so before we were about to set off to do this work, uh, I had a word given to me, and the word was that uh, there would be doors that would be opened for you where others found difficult to open. And where others struggled, you would walk into a stream of grace. And so I was so excited. I was like, yes, all right, okay, this is going to be easy. So we go to do the work, but we experience resistance. Instead of seeing doors open, it, it seems like they're slammed shut. Instead of seeing victory, it's almost like we're experiencing defeat. And I was a bit confused, and I'm like, God, you said one thing, but I'm experiencing another. God, there's a tension between the word that you gave to me and what I'm actually experiencing. God, what is going on? And I've realized something with God. It's that God doesn't speak about my promise and about my purpose to where it is, but to where he sees it. See, there are countless times in the Bible when God would speak to people and say, you are strong even though they felt weak. And when God speaks about your life, he doesn't speak to your life to where you see it, but it's to where he sees it. You may see defeat, but God sees victory. You may see bondage, but God sees freedom. You may see hurt and pain, but God sees love. God sees you to where he's called you to be. And in so reality, there actually is this tension. But do you know what tension is? Tension is when something is being stretched. When something is being pulled, tension is a push and pull. And so there's this push and pull between what God has spoken to you and what you're actually experiencing. But this tension, this gap between what God has spoken to you and what you're experiencing creates a dependency and a trust in him. And so God will use this tension. He will purposely stretch you so that you have to learn to rely on him. So that you learn to rely on him. God does have a purpose for you, but he wants you to learn to rely on him. Joshua's facing a challenge, and so he relies on God. God says to him, I've given Jericho into your hands, and then he tells him instructions of what to do. He says, I want you to march around the walls one time for six days. And on the seventh day, I want you to march around seven times, then have the priests blow the trumpets, and then have the people make a shout. And when they shout, the walls will come down. God gave Joshua a unique strategy. This strategy wasn't man-made. It wasn't a man-made plan, but it was actually a God-given strategy. And I, I want to say something about this strategy because, yes, this strategy was supernatural, but it was going to involve the people in it. In other words, the Israelites had to play a part in their miracle. Don't ask God to do something, then expect to do nothing. God will give you the strategy, but then you have to put it into practice. We are co-labors, co-partners with God, which means there is something practical that we have to do. And with every challenge, there is a strategy. Now, you may not like that strategy, but in God's commands, if you obey it, the walls will come down. And this year, my prayer has been, God, when we're about for Salford University, for anything that we're moving into, God, I want to learn to depend on you like never before. This year, I want to walk into the strategies that you have for me. What if instead of relying on our own strengths and ourselves, we would rely on God? What if we were to say, God, I don't want anything unless you bring me into it. I don't want that job. I don't want that relationship. I don't want anything unless you lead me into it. God was leading Joshua, and he gave him this strategy. Now, if I was Joshua, I'd be a little bit confused. Wouldn't you? How is marching around and shouting going to bring the walls down? Like, that, it's a bit weird. Now, we read it, and we may think that's normal, but we know the outcome. Joshua hasn't yet received the outcome. He doesn't know for sure that the walls will come down. And what God asked Joshua to do is a bit foolish. It's a bit unconventional. 
It goes against what armies would have done in those days. You see, in those days, if an army was laying siege to a city, they would surround the city, they would surround the walls, and they would wait till that city ran out of resources. And then the city would eventually surrender. Or they would build a, a mud ramp and they would try to climb up it and attack the city and go through the gates and take over the city. These were the more conventional, more common practices. Yet God didn't tell Joshua to do that. So you could understand if he was a bit confused. And it can be confusing when God asks you to do something that doesn't seem conventional, that doesn't make sense. But when we, when we are learning to trust in God, we need to have the faith to put our obedience into action. We need to have the faith to put our obedience into action. But I don't know about you, but sometimes I struggle with obedience because I want to see the outcome first. I want to know that what I'm doing is actually working. God, give me a sign that my obedience will bring these walls down. God, just give me a glimpse to know that what I am doing is working. And I'm sure the Israelites must have felt this way. They've been walking around the walls for six days, yet the walls are still standing. Day after day walking, yet nothing is happening. Have you ever wondered what was going on in their mind? Like, I would have loved to look in their mind and see, they must have been thinking, this leader, Joshua, that I'm following, he must have gone crazy. We're walking around these walls, yet they're not falling. What is going on? And if I were them, I would have been like, God, just give me a sign. I'm not even asking for a big sign. Just give me a tiny, how about God, you just let one brick fall. After one time I walk around, just let one brick fall so that I know that what I'm doing is working. I don't even need the wall. I just need one tiny sign. Yet nothing. Day one, they walk around the walls. The walls are still up. Day two, still nothing. Day three, still nothing. They did this for six straight days and nothing happened. And I wonder what the people of Jericho must have been thinking. They would have been seeing these people walking around the walls, and they're being quiet, they're being silent. They must have thought they had gone crazy. They would have been like, what are those people doing? And I'm sure that the people of Israel who were walking around the walls, what they were doing wasn't working, and they might have even been going crazy themselves. Here's a question to ask yourself. What do you do when what you are doing doesn't seem to be working? That what you're doing doesn't seem to be working. Maybe there's some of you here and you've been facing a challenge. It seems so big. It seems so impossible. For some of you, that challenge has been in front of you for weeks, for months. Maybe even for some, it's been there for years. And you've been trusting God. You've been hoping. You've been doing the work, yet the walls are still standing. Yet the challenge is still in front of you. God, I've been forgiving and forgiving my boss, yet my boss is still picking on me and making my life difficult. God, I've been constantly giving and giving to church, yet I still have no job. God, I've been praying for my kids. I've been praying for my family, yet they still seem so far away from God. God, what I'm doing doesn't seem to be working. And what's worse, you're being silent about it. You're not giving me a sign. Just show me that what I'm doing is working. I want to know that I'm on the right track. God, I'm tired. I'm fed up. I'm just about to give up. Show me that the walls will come down. Have you, have you been there? Where what you're doing doesn't seem to be working and now you're on the edge of giving up. You haven't received the outcome and now you're on the edge of quitting. And I find this so typical of God. He will ask us to do something and when we obey, it seems like the things are getting worse. It seems like nothing is working. But God wants to know, can you still trust me? Can you still obey me when what you're doing doesn't seem to be working? You see, obedience is our responsibility. Outcome is God's. Obedience is our responsibility. Outcome is God's. I may not be able to control the outcome, but my role is to obey. And God wants to know, can you still trust? Can you still obey when the outcome doesn't seem there? 
when what you're doing doesn't seem to be working. I'm just wondering if I can call Bless more up, please. So the, the Israelites, they've been walking around the wall for six days and nothing's happened. And now they're on day seven. Remember, God said if they would continue to march around on day seven, that when the priests blow the trumpets and the people release the sound, the walls would come down. And I'm sure they were just on the edge of giving up, just on the edge of quitting. But Joshua says to them, hey, if we release a sound, the walls will come down. Now, the priests blowing their trumpets was a form of worship. And when the people would release a sound, that was a form of worship. I don't know if I could have continued to trust God, let alone praise him in this situation. Like nothing I'm doing is working. So, so how is shouting going to bring the walls down? Plus, I thought I shouted and praised God after I got the victory. Don't you normally celebrate after winning? What am I celebrating about? What am I shouting about? How can I trust God when the walls are still standing in front of me? What do I do? What was behind the Israelites' shout? Could it be possible that when they were shouting, even though the walls were still standing, they were praising God because of who he was and what he had brought them through? They knew they served a faithful God, a powerful God who had already brought them through. Now, we don't have time to fully look into this, but before the Israelites faced Jericho, they were facing a challenge in the Jordan River. The Jordan was in between them and coming over to their purpose. The Jordan was a river that could have swallowed them up, yet God brought them through the Jordan. And so in Joshua chapter 4, when the Israelites have crossed over, God says to Joshua, I want you to take 12 stones from the Jordan River, and I want you to lay it on the ground as a reminder of what had just brought you through. God said, take 12 stones from the Jordan, the place that could have killed you, and it will be a reminder of what I did. The place that could have killed them, the place that could have been rock bottom, was now their stepping stone into what God was going to bring them into. And so when they release a shout, when they praise Him, there's a faith stirring inside of them to know that the God who brought them through the Jordan is the same God who's going to bring the walls of Jericho down. That even though they hadn't received their miracle yet, their shout, their trust wasn't in the outcome, but it was in God. Their praise was in God. I was praying about the student work. I'm just about to round up, but I was praying about the student work. And uh, if I'm being honest, I felt a little bit discouraged, a little bit disheartened. So I was like, God, we've been praying. We haven't seen the miracle yet. The doors that I expected to be open haven't been opened yet. And I felt a little bit as well, maybe a little bit fearful, realizing the task, like to reach out to the students of Salford University, that's a big deal. To try to tackle this, this wall, this giant of mental health, God, like, this is such a big thing. Like, are you sure you've called us to do this? And, and I was wondering, God, are we even going to make a difference? Like, what we do, is it even going to work? Is it even going to scratch the surface? And, and I was having this moment and maybe a little bit of unbelief, and I, I started to pray. And when I was praying, God took me back to two years ago. And it reminded me of when we first did our first young adult service in town to reach out to students. And we had put this service on in the middle of Manchester. Uh, and three weeks before the service, the, the company pulled the, the um, plug in our venue. And we had nowhere to go. We had done the promotion. We had done everything. And it looked like we were going to have to cancel. But there was a faith rising inside of me to say, no, God's going to come through. And a week before the service, God provided a venue completely free. And then last year... We had a, another service in Manchester Academy 3, and we, we put the service to reach out to students. And students came, students were wanted to Christ, and there were students who were struggling with, with depression and self-harm in that same building that were now playing on the worship team. And God reminded me, Jesse, what I've done once, I can do it again. If I've moved one mountain, I can move another. Jesse, whatever I started, I will complete. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say you may be facing a challenge in 2019, but the God that brought you through in 2018 will be the God that's with you in 2019. 
that you didn't come into 2019 empty-handed, but the God who is with you in the past challenges is still with you. And what could have been rock bottom in 2018 is going to be your stepping stone in 2019. And so I'm going to trust God in the midst of my challenges. I'm going to release a shout even when the storm is raging because my shout and my victory is not contingent on the outcome or the result, but it's based in God. I'm just wondering if we can just stand. We're closing. I want to let some of you know, God said for me to tell you the promise still stands. The purpose is still there. The challenge reveals the purpose. Behind the challenge, there is a purpose. There's something that God wants you to walk through. And if you will trust him, if you will say, God, I know it looks bleak. I know right now that the walls are still standing. I know the storm is still raging, but God, I've decided I'm gonna keep marching. I'm gonna keep moving. God, I, I have decided that this year, God, I'm gonna walk into everything. No challenge, no nothing is gonna stand in my way. I'm gonna look at my challenge I'm gonna say look how big my God is nothing can stand against my God I'm trying to tell you don't give up on that marriage don't give up on that situation don't give up on that job don't give up on praying for your kids don't give up on your dream keep trusting keep walking keep moving the God who started it he will complete it you just gotta decide God I'm gonna walk I'm gonna trust I'm gonna march I'm not stopping until I walk into everything no person nobody no situation will stop me from entering into what God has for me the tension that you are facing will create the expectation to become a reality the promise still stands and the God who started it will complete it are we willing to trust him even when it doesn't seem to be working I want everyone to close your eyes and bow your head I want to pray for those who are right now, maybe you're struggling because you don't know what your purpose is, or maybe there's a challenge in front of you. Maybe something that seems so big, it's been there for, for weeks, for months, for years, and you're like, God, I can't see a way. God, I can't overcome. I've tried everything, but the walls are still standing. The challenge is still there. I want to pray for you with every head bowed and eyes closed. I'm just wondering if that's you. Can you just raise your hand and put it back down? That's great. Thank you. All across the room, that's great. If you haven't already, if there's a challenge that you are facing, just raise your hand and put it back down. That's great, thank you. That's great, thank you. One more time. If there's a challenge and you haven't already responded, just put up your hand and I want to pray for you. That's great, thank you. Could it be that the challenge wants to re is to reveal your purpose? that the greater the challenge, the greater the purpose. God, we thank you for your faithfulness, God. We thank you that the promise still stands. God, we thank you that even though there is a, there's a wall in front of me, God, my purpose is not, is behind that wall, God. And so my praise is not contingent on the outcome. My praise is not contingent on the result, God. But I will release a shout of praise whether the walls are standing or the walls are gone. Come on, why don't we release a shout? Why don't we praise him now? We're praising God, not because of what he does, but because who he is our God is the God who's faithful and what he started he will complete God we give you a shout of praise you have never failed us yet we sing and I've seen you move you move the mountains